Lawyers of Reddit, what is the dumbest thing your client has ever done? Wore a shirt that said natural born killer on it to a hearing, for an assault charge. I had him turn it inside out. He went down anyway, but at least it was for, you know, actually assaulting someone, rather than the shirt. My all time favorite is a client I had who was charged with driving under the influence, DUI, who wanted to challenge the charges on the ground as he didn't think he was drunk and the tests was administered improperly, who appeared at his court hearings rip roaring drunk, twice, and then, both times, he got into his car and tried to drive away, and both times, the police promptly stopped him, administered a breathalyzer and charged him with DUI and related offenses. We didn't win that case. I was in court contesting a traffic ticket and saw something like this. The guy was in court for a DUI and was 7 sheets to the wind. He was taken out in shackles. Fell over twice. Told a client don't say anything to the police, wait until I get there, confesses to a crime he wasn't being investigated for. Not my client, but I was on the prosecutor's side when a defendant failed to appear for court. His attorney can't reach him, nobody know where he is, so we all sit there for about half an hour, until the judge gets sick of it and moves on with the docket. We found out later that day that the defendant decided to rob a 7 stroke 11 the night before and was sitting in jail two counties over when he should have been in court. Well, he did need money to pay his lawyer. I used to represent patients who were involuntarily committed because of a mental illness, so I wouldn't describe them as dumb, but still. Clark, do you swear to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Client, no, this happened a dozen different times. Had a client show up to a child custody hearing high on methamphetamine. When she arrived, she began screaming at the judge and demanding that her no good m head baby daddy be drug tested. I took her in the hallway and told her that if the judge ordered a drug test for the dad, he would have to order one for her. End of argument. I worked for the public defender's office and met a client in jail for a lineup that he had adamantly demanded regarding a crime with multiple witnesses. I met the client for the first time in a separate room to let him know how it would go down and what to expect. This is the kind of lineup you traditionally see on television where there are a number of similar looking people standing shoulder to shoulder in front of mirrored glass. They pull the people for the lineup from the jail population and despite their best efforts this is not a huge population. I walk in to meet the client and he has a sty on his left lower eyelid the size of a golf ball. It was the most identifiable mark on a human's face I have ever seen. He still demanded the lineup and was identified instantly by every single witness without a shred of doubt in their mind. He still demanded a trial and the sty was gone by the time the trial commenced. TL. DR. Guy with golf ball sized lump on face demands comparative lineup. I had one of these. Defendant robbed his friends at gunpoint in their home wearing a Halloween mask he had shown them the day before and wearing a short sleeved shirt that displayed his distinctive sleeve of tattoos. Fasapum. Judge was determining if a defendant qualified for a public defender. Judge, sir, do you have any income? Defendant, yes, your honor. Judge, from what source do you have income? Defendant, selling marijuana, your honor. This happened in Illinois, and the defendant was not under oath. Honesty is the best policy, unless it involves telling a judge you sell weed for a living. I represent clients before the IRS. Had a couple who owed around $250,000 in back taxes. We had no defense, so the only thing to do was have the clients meet with the IRS and plead for leniency. Well, the wife got arrogant with the IRS agent, and at one point stood up and screamed at the IRS agent, who was a pretty decent person, making a very middle class wage. You'll take away my Mercedes over my dead body then she stormed out of the conference room. Needless to say, she lost the Mercedes. Not a lawyer, but this happened in court. My dad was suing a customer for non-payment. The judge ruled in his favor for the whole 15k. The guy he was suing got up to leave, but walked over to my dad and said if you think you are going to see a dime of that money you are a freaking moron. I will kill you first. He then walked away. For a second my dad was worried the guy would get away with the threat. But he didn't worry much because the guy had said it loud enough for the bailiff and the judge to hear. He did not make it out of the courtroom. 
My dad was a lawyer in the Navy. One of his first big cases was defending a guy accused of falling asleep at his post during Vietnam. My dad was all psyched, delivering what he thought was well prepared defense to the judge. The judge interrupted him, telling him to turn around and wake up his client. Guy might have had some type of disorder. A client in a pie case claiming damage to their lower back posted pictures of themselves to their Facebook page riding jet skis and horses. The defense subpoenaed the client's Facebook page. Now that is a job that gets easier thanks to social media. The case had gone on for years. Client was badly injured in a car accident and was about to win millions. Then she posted a Facebook status about her doing something very active and thus negating the entire case. Had to settle for $100,000. Years of work down the drain in one Facebook status. Attorney servant off process. This is Jen from Judge Grandpa Faces office. Your client, who I see is charged with harassing phone calls, left us 87 messages over the weekend. The judge would like a word with you. You see your honor, I couldn't be the one harassing my ex because I spent my weekend harassing you. I had a brilliant gentleman on probation for narcotics trafficking and was not permitted to own user cell phone. He went in for a drug test with his probation officer, and his cell rang in his pocket. The PO went to take the phone from his pocket and also pulled out a large baggie of C that he brought to his drug test. He wanted that crap tested, for science. A, B and C are drinking and playing cards. A shoots B with a crossbow, just happened to have one. B staggers out into the street where, naturally, he attracts some attention. A flees. Police follow blood trail back to the scene to find C. My eventual client, mopping up the blood, placing the crossbow bolt in a garbage bag, and generally tidying up, charged with tampering with evidence. I never understood why his internal housewife took over and kept him from calling 911. Fortunately I was not the attorney in question, but, guy is convicted of some traffic related offense, loses his driver's license effective immediately, gets in the car and drives home, along with his lawyer. I remember watching a short little blurb about the number of people that drive to the DMV to get their expired licenses renewed, and even the ones who go, fail the test, then drive home. Not my client and not my case. But a colleague was defending a driver in a wrongful death case. The first question at his deposition was please state your name for the record. The driver stood up and started screaming at the plaintiff's attorney and threatened to kill him. That went well. Dot. I just imagine him finishing his death threats. Sitting down. Still red in the face. Then turning to his lawyer and giving a thumbs up. Didn't happen to me. But happened to an attorney I know. Client shows up for prelim hearing on domestic violence petition. Is wearing ratty shirt but his attorney doesn't pay attention to it. Attorney starts arguing and sees a judge turning bright red, fuming with anger. Judge asks the attorney if he spoke with his client about courtroom attire. Attorney looks down. Client is wearing a shirt that says I have the dong so I make the rules. Should have worn his yellow shirt instead. Always works for me. It reminds the judge that you only live once. So he shouldn't put you in jail too long. Story from a friend of mine. He was defending a guy in court. Don't remember what he was charged with. The main witness for prosecution was on the stand. And was asked if she could identify the defendant. She was scanning the courtroom and seemed confused. My friend was already silently celebrating because if she couldn't identify him. He could probably get all charge dropped. As he was mentally adding this case to the win file. He happened to glance over at his client, who had just helpfully raised his hand to make it easier for her to identify him. Even the judge Fassa palmed on that one. My law teacher would tell stories about a juvenile court he used to work in in one of the more questionable areas of California. Apparently they had a real problem with defendants coming in with sagging pants and court officials showing up in beach clothes. The judge finally got so fed up with it that he kept a box of rope for an impromptu belt, and a box of neckties behind his desk, and he'd begin court proceedings by lobbing ample amounts of both over his stand at anyone he felt was in need of them. The cops in my preliminary hearing showed up in camo shorts and beaters. I was wearing suit and tie. I work as a legal aid lawyer in a Canadian province. I have had many dumb clients, 
who did many dumb things, wore a smoke weed everyday t-shirt while attending their drug trafficking producing trial, attempted to smuggle cigarettes to their inmate partner via their baby's diaper, intentionally pooped their pants on the way to court to delay their matter, denied driving under the influence. Upon search by police, a full highball glass of rum and coke was located in their jacket pocket, debauched a girl sent her text messages from his phone the next day recalling all the sordid details. I have many more stories that I could tell if there was sufficient interest. The ones I mentioned here all happened in the past couple of months. More stories. One of my first clients was a delirious hobo. When we were meeting at my office, he was ranting and his dentures fell out and landed on my legal pad. He picked them up and put them back in his mouth and continued to rant as if nothing happened. Same guy appeared in court a few weeks later and refused to let the security detail inspect his hobo bindle. He told them he wasn't going to appear without his bindle and left. He was arrested that afternoon for failure to appear. Guy came in and said he wanted to see Oral B because their toothbrushes kept cutting his gums. He asked if I wanted to see his evidence. I said no. But he still proceeded to dump a grocery bag of used, slightly bloodied, toothbrushes onto my desk. Another good one. Doing a trial for client in a circuit court about an hour outside of the city I operate in. Client decides to get a cab out there and tells the driver they'll pay them when they arrive. A client arrives in this community and gets the driver to stop at local convenience store across the street from the courthouse. Client proceeds to attempt to steal 5 26 ounce bottles of rum and is promptly arrested and taken into custody. Trial is postponed as we spend the day, unsuccessfully, applying for bail. I am not a lawyer but this worked out super well for me. I was hit by the 65 year old drunk lady, who also happened to be on methadone at the time. The cops knew her husband who was a firefighter, and so they didn't breathalyze or do any tests and didn't charge her with DUI. My MTs had said that lady is so drunk, she's going to buy you a ticket to Disney World, which is how I knew that she was drunk at the time of the accident. But I had no proof to bring to the table in the lawsuit because if the cops didn't charge or make notes then you cannot add it later. So we get to my deposition and she shows up. She argues with me the entire time over my points and her lawyer keeps having to tell her that she needs to be quiet. Mind you, this lady had ruined my friends and my lives, so I was becoming less than patient with her calling me a liar when she got off scot-free. She exclaims to my lawyer even the police report is wrong. What do you mean it's wrong? It has me coming from the wrong place. Where were you coming from? My friend's bar. Comma really? Did you have any drinks at this bar? Well yeah. How many? I don't know. They don't charge me they just keep refilling my class. Cue her lawyer's face palm as this is all on tape. TLDR. Lady exclaims that she was drinking and driving when she could have gotten off scot-free. Karma. Family law case. Judge had asked to interview the minor child in a closed courtroom with no parents. Attorneys could stay. When done, client Ray enters the courtroom to see the child crying and promptly tells the judge that he is freaking retarded. Right up to that point. My client was winning and was about to have the other party's parenting time suspended. The kid had said the other party abuses him and that he did not want to see that parent anymore. Judge was not pleased. Other party's parenting time suspended. My client has anger management classes ordered. Fines. Psych testing. And drug testing. This is the worst part about people when it comes to family law. They screw themselves over and the judge is honestly looking to do what is best for the child. But if you make a huge scene like you're freaking batchet crazy. During a divorce, the ex-husband claimed that he didn't make much or any money and wasn't able to pay the child support we were asking him to pay. A few hours after receiving this information he posts a picture on his public Facebook of a wad of cash talking about how balan he was. Needless to say his claim didn't hold up after that. In his defense, people who post pictures of cash normally are poor. That's why they're so excited to have whatever money they do have. Not my client, but in a well-known prisoner civil rights suit, the prisoner, acting pro se of course, filed a motion to kiss my butt in which he requested that America at large, and one corrupt judge bend over and kiss his butt. The motion was denied. I'm going to allow it. 
At first appearance, a defendant stood there calmly and quietly when the judge was reading his charges and bond information. When the judge asked if the defendant had any questions, the defendant gave the judge the finger and said frick you, mother sucker, go frick yourself, and then proceeded to throw down the microphone and walk away. The judge, who had been on the bench for years, replied well, I guess I'll let you know when my fan club meets. Bonus, the fan club has its own building, with free meals and exercise facilities. My sister is a public defender. She recently had a shoplifting case where the defendant was caught in possession of stolen goods which happened to match a list, also in his possession, entitled crap to steal from Walmart. So he made a shoplifting list. Client was an accountant for a good size company. During the recession she was laid off and filed for unemployment where claimed she made 200k plus salary. Real salary was 60k. The company received the unemployment claim, investigated, and found out she embezzled millions. Not a lawyer or in any way educated on law and court proceedings and such. So please forgive my ignorance but I want to ask something. Say you're in court and your client does something horribly stupid such as, gives evidence incriminating himself accidentally confesses. What do you do? Do you just sigh, admit you lost, and everything stops or is there any way to salvage that? Just a curious question. So I'm a law student, but I work at a volunteer desk that helps people complete the forms for court. But the awful part is I can't give any legal advice since I'm not a lawyer, which means I can't tell these people they don't have a case. However, the stories are great. They're the lady who sues celebrities. She asked me to help her sue Robert De Niro. Someone else helped her with a suit for Matthew McConaughey. She was doing it on behalf of her kids and their fathers for in excess of $100 million. She didn't even know how to spell their names. Then, there's the guy who is suing DirecTV, CNN, Fox, and who knows who else. Apparently, he's the one you have to THNK for putting color on your TV shows and adding animation. He was suing because they hadn't paid him, ever. Finally, there's the lady who is suing her former employer for giving her too much money on her last paycheck. She told me they did it because they liked her and wanted her to come back. There was maybe 60 extra dollars on the check. She was suing for $10,000. Not a lawyer but in court for a ticket. Apparently the cop lost the ticket book so there was no official evidence. The judge said, the next 15 on the docket, I was luckily one of the 15. Just needed to say not guilty since there was no evidence. One moron got up there and started to argue that he was only going 5 miles per hour over not 10. The judge looked at him and said son, just say not guilty. The guy again said but I wasn't going that fast. The judge laughed and repeated again, son, just say two words for me, not in guilty. The guy, confused mumbled not guilty in the form of a question. The judge said dismissed. Everyone in the courtroom laughed and clapped for him. I love that I'm 80 some odd in, and this is the first one that didn't result in the person destroying their chances in court. I'm not a lawyer, but the optometrist that I went to had an officer manager that was marking on people's accounts that they got refund checks and crediting the balance, then cashing them herself. She took $50,000 in a year and got caught. When asked why she did it, she said no one told me I couldn't. Airtight argument. So I was representing a kid accused of conspiracy to supply crack C. He was accused of acting as a lookout, warning the others whenever the police were approaching. He had a fantastic case and it looked like he was going to win. On the day of trial he turned up for trial wearing a huge t-shirt with the Warner Brothers logo on. Above and below the WB logo was printed if you see the pigs. Warner brother, he refused to change. Nah blood, no white boy tells me how to dress. He was convicted. Not a lawyer but a legal secretary. It's illegal to kill crocodiles in Australia so our client filmed himself and his friends doing it. Funnily enough, they got caught. Going to be kind of hard to disprove a video that clearly shows the animal being killed and subsequent celebration. Plus photos with the carcass. What an idiot. Another guy robbed the pub he worked for, stole the work ute, drove to the city, went straight to the casino, parked the work car in the lot, lost 10 dollars, 
000 playing blackjack then bought $2.500 and was entertaining them when the cops arrested him. Classic. There are probably others, but I've been doing this for 10 years so they've all blurred together. People are dumb. Not a lawyer here, still in law school, but assisting lawyers with cases. One day, we got involved in a caretaking debate for an old woman. Her daughter and an attorney were declared legal guardians for her, due to dementia and her high age. Her niece got us involved questioning the motives of the daughter as an assigned legal guardian. Long story short, her motives were definitely questionable. She stole 10,000s of dollars and even her mom's vacuum cleaner and silver cutlery, which resulted in the poor woman eating with her fingers. And the case seemed to be a piece of cake for us. Then the niece, our client, took the old lady away to her senior citizen home to guarantee she was taken care well of. Her intentions were gold. Unfortunately, daughter and attorney were still legal guardians and had the right to determine the place of residence. In the end, our client was charged with kidnapping and we lost the case. Moral of the story, don't ever do anything case related before talking to your lawyer. Seriously, don't. My high school best friend's father is a lawyer, and I remember him telling me this story years ago. He gets a client who was being charged with a DUI. He asks the client what happened and the client states that he had two drinks, get stopped, and the police wrongly charged him with driving under the influence. My friend's dad then looked over the evidence as any good lawyer would do. Come to find out, there was video evidence from a dash cam. Awesome. His client on video was visibly drunk, and he described it as being you'd be stupid to think he was sober. He was convinced there wasn't much he could do with this. There's icing on the cake though. When the police officer went to give him the brief laser his client has heard stating, I'm too drunk to use this dink thing. I'm a law student but I have internship stories. We had a client who was convicted of murdering his stepson. Before passing sentencing the judge asked if he had anything to say to the court. He replied, I only fricked up when I didn't kill my wife too. Life sentence. Another client upon being pulled over and being asked if he had any drugs or alcohol in the car voluntarily told the office that he didn't but did have the H he sold in his hotel room. He then kindly escorted the officer there and gave it to him. We had a client charged with selling C. In order to determine if he qualified for a public defender the judge asked if he had any way he made an income and he replied, Well, you know, from selling coke, I bet I can't think of more too attacked a courtroom deputy during his trial for being a violent diddler. One of the issues was whether or not he was a danger to the community. My lawyer brother once got a contempt of court charge dismissed against his client by begging for mercy. Using a Forrest Gump-like defense my client is not a smart man. Immediately after the charge was dismissed, the client turned and in front of the entire court punched my brother in the mouth. Yelling who are you calling dumb client was promptly re-arrested. Arguing for my client to be released on his own recog. The judge asks him where he is going to live. With my fiance. He says. He spins a lovely tale about how wonderful his fiance is. How supportive. Did he mention they are having a baby and he wants to get out of jail and take care of his soon to be wife and kid to support them properly? The judge asks the courtroom. Could defendant's fiance please approach the bench? From opposite sides of the room. Two women stand up and start walking to the front. One is about 4 months pregnant and the other is nearly 9 months pregnant. They are looking at each other with identical expressions of who the frick are you you could see the exact moment when each of them realized that B is fricking my man. The fight started before they even got to counsel's table. Pregnancy or not, these chicks were seriously trying to kill one another. The bailiffs had to stop laughing long enough to break up the fight. My client says, frick, your honor, I didn't think they'd both come. The judge said he was denying bail for my client's own protection. Not my client, but a lawyer friend of mine had a client who went on a double date with his friend. He and his friend decided it would be a good idea to frick their respective dates in his van. The problem is, they had only one condom. They decided to share it. After one finished, the other proceeded to invert the dirty condom and frick his girl. The girl got pregnant from his friend's sperm that was on the condom that he was wearing. The result, a very messy paternity suit. Not a lawyer, but a paralegal and my the list of dumb I've seen would stretch to the moon. 
the list of mean would be twice as long. Some examples, not a client, but a defendant who took revenge on his girlfriend by gluing down everything in her apartment, glued pillows to the bed and couch, the ashtray and phone to the coffee table and even glued the vacuum cleaner to the carpet, going to add another dumb one, not showing up for court, had a defendant client with a very simple traffic issue but he would not come to court, now, he had an attorney, a good one, who had negotiated a sweet, sweet deal, but since he wouldn't come to court, the judge put a warrant out for his arrest. No big whoop. We find the client, arrange for him to come to court on the next available day and file the appropriate motions to have the warrant lifted. And guess what? He doesn't show. So now, his sweet deal is blown. He's incurred $600 to $700 in additional attorney fees for the extra work and there's still a warrant out for his arrest. Dumbass. The glue thing sounds like art. I'd pay to see that. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.